Hello again. In this video, we would like to solve the following buffer related problem. 200 milliliters of a sodium hydroxide solution is added to 400 milliliters of a 2.0 molar nitrous acid. As a result, the pH is raised by 1.5 units. Therefore, we have to calculate the molarity of the original sodium hydroxide solution. You can pause the video now, attempt the solution yourself, then restart the video to see how we solve the problem. Welcome back. Our first step is to concern ourselves with the nitrous acid before it reacts with the sodium hydroxide. Recall that nitrous acid is a weak acid. So it undergoes the following partial dissociation, form H plus and nitrate ion By consulting the table, we realize that the equilibrium constant for this reaction, the Ka, is equal to 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4. Our first step now is to determine what the pH of that solution is by itself before we add any sodium hydroxide. Let's let x equal the concentration of H plus. And since we notice that just starting with the nitrous acid, that for every one mole of nitrous acid that dissociates, we get exactly one mole of H plus and one mole of nitrite ion. Specifically, the amount of H plus is identical to the amount of nitrite. So X is also equal to the concentration of nitrate. Now we can write out the equilibrium constant expression for this reaction. And we recall it's going to be H plus times the concentration of nitrate divided by the concentration of nitrous acid that's undissociated. And we know that's going to be equal to 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4. Now substituting our values for X, we realize that we can replace H plus by X. We can replace nitrite by X. And then the amount of undissociated nitrous acid is equal to the original concentration, which is 2.0 molar, minus the amount of nitrous acid that dissociates, which is 2.0 minus X. And this is going to be equal to the constant, which is 4.5 times 10 to the minus to simplify the solution of this equation, let us make the following assumption. Let us assume that the amount of nitrous acid that dissociates is very small relative to the initial concentration. In other words, we assume that X is much, much smaller than 2.0. If we make that assumption, the denominator becomes 2.0 itself. We can simplify the numerator since x times x is x squared. That gives us x squared divided by 2.0 is equal to 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. Now we can multiply each side by 2 and that gives us that x squared is equal to 9.0 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. And now taking the square root of each side, we can perform this calculation on site. It's equal to 3.0 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. Now we recall the meaning of the variable x that we had set it to be equal to the concentration of H plus at equilibrium. So now we can determine the pH of the original solution by using the definition that the pH is the negative log 
of the concentration of H+. So that gives us the negative log of 3.0 times 10 to the minus 2. Now, performing this calculation, it gives us a value of 1.52 for the initial pH. Furthermore, we know from the statement of the problem that the final pH is 1.5 units greater. So to find that particular pH, we simply need to add 1.5 to this, and it tells us that our final pH must be equal to 3.02. Next, we need to employ the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, which tells us that for a buffer solution, the pH is going to be equal to the pKa of the acid plus the log of the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the undissociated acid. In this particular case, the acid is nitrous acid, so we would like to calculate the pKa of nitrous acid. And recall that this is the negative log of the acid dissociation constant Ka. In the case of nitrous acid, this value is 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4. Solving for this relationship, we get that the pKa is equal to 3.346 for nitrous acid. Therefore, we can set up uh, the basics of our use of the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. We know that the final pH that we're looking for is 3.02. We know that the pKa of the acid involved is 3.346. And then to be determined, we have the log of the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the undissociated acid. We can simplify this equation a little bit here, and we get that minus 3.26.326 is equal to the log of the ratio of the concentration of the conjugate base to that of the undissociated acid. To remove the log from the right-hand side, we employ properties of exponents. So we can raise each side as a power of 10. 10 to the log of this ratio is simply this ratio. And then the left-hand side becomes 0.47. One. So this tells us that the ratio of the conjugate base to the undissociated acid is 0.471. Our next step is to, again, concern ourselves with the original nitrous acid solution and to calculate how many moles of acid were present. So recall that we had 400 milliliters of the solution of a solution of 2.0 molar. So that tells us that we have two moles of the nitrous acid per one liter of solution. But we only had 400 milliliters of solution. So recall that one liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. And now we notice that the units of milliliters cancel milliliters, the units of liters cancel liters, and we're left with an answer in terms of the moles of nitrous acid 
that were present in the original solution. So this tells us that there were originally 0 0.8 moles of nitrous acid in the original solution. Next, we realize that the original 200 milliliters of nitrous acid is going to change its volume when we add the 400 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide solution. So the new volume of the solution is going to be equal to the 200 milliliters that we started with plus 400 milliliters. And we're going to assume that since they're relatively dilute solutions, that they act ideally and that we can simply add the volumes. So this tells us that the new volume of solution is going to be 600 milliliters. And the reason we need that is we want to determine the new concentration of the nitrous acid. So the new concentration We have the 0 0.8 moles of nitrous acid and now in a volume of 600 milliliters and to convert this to molarity we again use our conversion factor that we have 1000 milliliters in one liter and this tells us that our new concentration is going to be 1.33 three molar. But we have to be very careful how we interpret this concentration because this 1.33 molar consists of the undissociated nitrous acid plus some dissociated nitrous acid. And that's going to be relevant in the next step. So our 1.333 molar consists of our concentration of the undissociated nitrous acid plus the amount that's dissociated, which we can represent as the concentration of nitrite ion, NO2 minus. So now we want to figure out how much of the 1.33 molar is undissociated nitrous acid and how much is dissociated. So what we'd like to do is let x equal the concentration of undissociated acid. Okay. So that means the concentration of nitrate is going to be 1.333 molar minus x. Now I'll also note that within the henderson hasselbach equation that the x concentration here is the HA, the undissociated part, Whereas the nitrous nitrite ion is the A minus part. So remember that we had worked out the ratio of the uh, unassociated to the associated acid. So that gives us that 0 0.471 times x is equal to 1.333 minus x. Adding x to both sides gives us 1.471 x is equal to 1.333 molar. Divide each side by 1.471 and that tells us that x is equal to 0 0.906. So the 0 0.906 molar is the concentration of the undissociated acid. We remind ourselves that it's the HA. Since these add together to form 1.33, that tells us that the concentration of the dissociated acid, the conjugate base, is going to be 0 0.427 molar. So this is the concentration of nitrate, or we can also think of it as the A minus in the henderson hasselbach equation. So now let us figure out, in the final solution of, that has 600 milliliters of volume, 
how many moles of nitrite are there? So, we have 0 0.427 moles of nitrite per liter because we have a concentration of 0.427 molar. But the volume is 600 milliliters. We also know that we have 1,000 milliliters in one liter. So this tells us that in the final solution, we actually have a total of 0 0.2583 moles of nitrite. Now, recall that in the pure acid solution, the concentration of nitrite was only 3 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. And it's much larger here after we added the sodium hydroxide. So the question becomes, where did all that extra nitrite come from? Well, recall that if we, right at the neutralization reaction between sodium hydroxide and nitrous acid, that for every one mole of nitrite, excuse me, pardon that we use nitrous acid and nitrite here, that for every one mole of sodium hydroxide that reacts with nitrous acid, we get exactly one mole of nitrite. So that tells us that there's a one to one relationship between the sodium hydroxide moles that were added and the moles of nitrite that were formed. So this immediately tells us that we must have had 0 0.2583 moles of sodium hydroxide that were added. Now, we also know that these 0 0.2583 moles of sodium hydroxide were in a solution with a volume of 200 milliliters. So the number of moles per uh, unit volume is a concentration. And now we just like to convert this concentration to the familiar units of molarity. So we have 1,000 milliliters per liter. And this gives us 1.28 moles of sodium hydroxide per liter, but that's simply molarity. So this tells us that the initial concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution must have been 1.28 molar sodium hydroxide. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.